everyone, my name is Elaine, and today I'm going to be continuing my summary of Brandon Sanderson's Oathbringer. I'm going to be picking up right where I left off with Part 3, Defying Truth, Love Truth, Chapter 58. Kaladin and Shallan come through the Oath Gate from Thalen City. Kaladin announces that the Queen is ready to meet Dalinar. Dalinar tells him that he is to ride the next storm to Kolinar, and that he has been given land because of his new social standing. Kaladin is stunned and uncomfortable with the burden of his care. Dalinar more or less tells him that's too bad. Kaladin says he wants to bring his parents to Urethru. Dalinar says he can once he gets Kolinar's gate open. A small contingent, which includes Dalinar and Navani, goes through the gate to Thalen City. Dalinar sees how much of it has been destroyed. Feng gives the newcomers a tour. Chapter 59. The tour consists of temples, many destroyed. Taravangian is distraught by the sick and injured found in one of them and offers aid. Fen allows him to send for his surgeons. Taravangian misses the rest of the tour. Dalinar picks a fight with Fen's son. They fight an unbalanced match. Dalinar unarmed for three minutes while the youth is armed with a sword, the fight lasting to first blood. Dalinar lets the younger man stab him and heals himself with stormlight. He's ashamed of himself afterward and goes to be alone. Dalinar sits before the temple of Telenolat, the herald he lost, and hears the voices of the temple's friend coming from the rubble asking him to unite them. Dalinar begins to put the temple back together with the help of his spawn smith abilities. First time he's used them. Shiny! Afterwards, he asks the scribe to send for Renarin. Dalinar continues to fix the rubble while Renarin heals some of the wounded. Queen Fen agrees to join Dalinar's coalition and to see if the factions will allow further aid from Dalinar's people in rebuilding her city. Chapter 60. Elkar's chosen ride the storm to Kolinar. Syl hints that she thinks Kaladin should pursue Shallan again on the way over. Upon arriving, Kaladin scouts ahead. He discovers that the enemy is building storm shelters in the killing field that stretches before the city and finds darkness hanging over the palace. When he reports to Elkar, he urges caution. They decide to use Shallan's illusions to get inside even though it appears that the city is still in human hands. 61. Shallan creates disguises for Adolin, Kaladin, and Elkar. The king is a light-eyed woman. The others are old men. They will use the disguises to pass as refugees and get inside Kolinar. Elkar tells Kaladin that he's counting on him when he fails, to open the oath gate, save his family, reinforce Kolinar. Their group and several others are barred from entry. Kolinar is running out of both food and room. The Voidbringers raid the city wall. The guards run to protect it and the refugees rush inside. Adolin begins leading everyone through the city toward a safe place he knows. Elkar's chosen pass an overcrowded city filled with refugees, a parade where the performers are dressed as spren, and the spectators don't seem to be having any fun. Exhaustion spren that aren't exhaustion spread hovering above a tired mother. They arrive at Adolin's idea of a safe place, his tailor. 62. This is a very scattered chapter with lots of different thoughts and ideas. Yoksha, the tailor, begins to inform the king, Adolin, and Kaladin of what has been going on within Kolinar. Shallan tries to attract Spren so she can compare them to their typical forms. Yoksha says it got really bad when the queen executed the Ardent. The palace guard and city watch are holed up in the palace on the queen's orders. There were riots and a proclamation calling to kill the city's parchment. Elokar says the dark Spren must be to blame, the reason why his wife is acting strangely, even though the timing is off for parts of it. Shallan believes another unmade is in the city. Yoksha remembers that a group of Light Eyes went to talk to the Queen and never returned. The parchment aren't killed, only exiled. Eventually, the Wall Guard restored order to a certain degree. Various High Lords have seized power in certain sections of the city, but the Cult of Moments, the people who dress as Spren, are those with real power. The group discovers that if one uses a Fabriel, such as a Span Reed, they draw screaming yellow Spren and Void Ringers, which steal the Fabriel and often kill its user. That's on page 624. No one in the King's group has heard of High Marshal Azur, head of the Wall Guard. Elokar realizes that the Voidbringers are trying to keep Kolinar isolated. Elokar tells Shallan to disguise herself as a messenger and take a note from him to the Queen, a reconnaissance mission. Kaladin is to follow and help her escape should things turn sour. As Shallan prepares to depart, she informs Red, Vatha, and Ishna that she is also Vale before setting out. Chapter 63. Shallan does some reconnaissance of the palace and notices several people dressed as Spren standing on the walkway leading up to the Oathgate platform. She thinks the cult may be involved in whatever is going on in Kolinar. Vale, now disguised as Lynn, retrieves the king's letter from Kaladin and heads into the palace. She is run through by a guard. Vale partially heals herself with stormlight and feigns death. A guard carries her into a wine cellar containing seven corpses. She thinks they may be the Light Eyes who came to speak with the Queen. On the way there, Vale passed a mirror and saw what appeared to be the shadow of a person, only with white spots for eyes. Staring back, surprised, that's on 634. With Pattern's help, Vale manages to escape. She sends Pattern to find Kaladin, and together, they return to the hideout. Chapter 64 Dalinar retrieves the assassin in white's honor blade. He realizes that Tezem, the god priest of Tukar, is Ishi, herald of luck. The Stormfather alludes to how there can only be three people like Dalinar at any given time, one for each of us, but doesn't explain who us is. That's on 639. Dalinar gives the blade to Bridge Four so that they can continue their training while Kaladin is away. Dalinar tells them not to let anyone know they have the blade. Dalinar travels to the Oathgate to meet the Azish court alone. Chapter 65 
Dalinar uses his powers to learn the Azish's language and presents them with three essays, the first written by Fen, the second, Navani, and the third, Yasna. This convinces those gathered to take him to the palace. He is left to wait in a room. Dalinar speaks with Lyft, who says she is an edge dancer. Vizier Nura returns to inform Dalinar that the Emperor and his council have decided to visit Urthuru. They will bring others with them, such as an ambassador from Tashik. Dalinar is overjoyed and returns to the Oathgate to Urthuru, where he stumbles because he finally remembers what happened to Evie. Flashback from 11 years ago, Dalinar's perspective. The Vedans signed a treaty following their long war with Dalinar and his forces, which signified that they recognized Gavilar as Alethkar's sole and rightful king. Dalinar gets a letter from his brother via Spanreed commending him, saying he wants to speak in person and commanding him to go to the Rift to crush the rebellion. Sadius is to join him there, and it seems another high prince is supporting Tanalan and his rebels. Evie is upset Dalinar won't settle down. She hates war and the Alethi ways. Dalinar promises her at least a year in Kolinar after he's finished with the Rift and storms off to plan his assault. Chapter 67. Elokar devises a plan for how to proceed in Kolinar. Shalon is to find out more about the cult of moments and how they're utilizing the Oathgate platform. Adolin and Elokar are to gather support from the local light eyes while in disguise. Kaladin is to investigate Azur and his wall guard. Adolin notes that they have to deal with what the executed Ardent said about the queen, her denouncement of the queen's excess. Elokar wants to save it for after they have rescued the queen and their child. Notes that Yasna never wanted him to marry his wife. The group signs off on their tasks, although Kaladin notes that they need to figure out where all the city's grain is coming from. Vale does some more reconnaissance and discovers that the grain doesn't always go to those in need. It often goes to servants from wealthy families. She thinks Valenalat may be trying to get Belaidai's support should he try to seize power. She wonders where Valenalat is getting all the grain from. Vale longs to save Kolinar, but doesn't know how. She finds Wit retelling the story of Misham, the cleverest of the three moons, and Queen Sa. Wit seems to recognize her despite the disguise during his telling. Afterwards, he remarks on how he misses his flute and invites Vale to buy him some food. Chapter 68 Wit and Vale go to a tavern where Wit has angered the innkeeper for not attracting more customers with his stories. They take a private room and Wit says she did well with the disguise, but his broken character. Shallan realizes he is ancient, older than the heralds. Wit finds out Sadius was killed and admits he doesn't know what he is doing in Kolinar. Why his promise to always be there when he is needed led him to the city. Shallan admits that she wants to have the power to change the world. They speak of the nature of power and Wit warns her to be wary of anyone who claims to be able to see the future. On page 683. Wit claims that there are two groups within the Cult of Moments, one who pretends to be Spren and doesn't know what's going on, and a group of hedonists upon the Oathgate platform who know Spren, including the Heart of the Revel, and Unmade. They are eager for new recruits. After Shallan explains Elokar's hopes for her, Wit says he can get her into the Cult if she brings non soulcast food to their Revels. Wit won't join her and the others. He's not in the city for Shallan. Wit departs before the innkeeper arrives. Shallan pays for their meals. Pattern says Wit feels like one of us. On page 685. Shallan returns to the tailor to figure out how to get the food. Chapter 69. Kaladin lashes a rock to attract the screaming spren. One comes with a Voidbringer. The spren can't find Kaladin and they leave. Apparently, the Radiance can draw in Stormlight and it won't call the screaming spren and Shallan's light weaving is too quiet to attract them. Adolin, the king, Kaladin, Drehi, and Scar prepare to go to a party. The light eyes in disguise. When they arrive, Elokar hands out assignments. He and Adolin are to seek out potential allies among the Light Eyes. The Bridgemen are to find out more about the Cult of Moments and other city peculiarities. And Kaladin is to find out more about Azur and his guard. Kaladin feels uncomfortable going into the party and leaves with Scar's spear. He walks to the wall and is stopped by a squad of soldiers. They assume he's a deserter and invite him to eat. His illusion had worn off and his brands were visible. Again, the soldiers offer Kaladin a meal free of charge. Kaladin accepts so that he can find out more about their leader. Chapter 70. Kaladin eats with Lieutenant Noro and his men. They keep reminding him of the access they have to food, warm beds, and more to try and convince him to join the wall guard. They won't tell him where they get the food. Kaladin realizes they're all light eyes. Azur comes for a visit. Kaladin discovers the High Marshal is a shard blade bearing woman. She asks him to come with her. Azur shows Kaladin the enemy's movements, urges him to join the wall guard. They bid each other farewell, and Kaladin returns to the party, doesn't find anything new out. When he meets with the others, he finds the king's and Adolin's illusion still intact. He wonders what went wrong with his, and admits he might have found a new radiant. Eleven years ago, another Dalinar flashback. Dalinar speaks with his wife on the way to the Rift and discovers that she wants him to starve the monster inside him, keep from killing. When they arrive at the Rift, Dalinar speaks with young Tanalin. Dalinar offers to duel Tanalin in order to avoid a larger war. Tanalin refuses, convinced he can't win. Instead, Tanalin offers to make the notion that he led a false rebellion, intended to trick disloyal high princes into revealing themselves public, on page 707. They could cite his having been spared by Dalinar, their conversation in the field, etc., as proof that they had been working together since Tanalin was younger. In return, Tanalan would be recognized as a legitimate high lord within the kingdom, and there would be no fighting. 
Talonalan claims that Sadius is the traitor. Dalinar doesn't believe him, but goes off to investigate the large caravan his men had let go earlier, while Taleb takes command of his armies. The army settles in, and Evie writes Gavilar informing him of what happened and urging him not to trust anyone as Dalinar investigates. Chapter 72 Back in the Present Vale, Vatha, Red, and Ishna rob Lady Nananav, Mistress of Rockfall. They are discovered and Vale has to use her powers to help them escape with the food they took for the cult, especially because she is shot with a crossbow bolt before they make it through the gates. Vale finds a message from Wit in the tavern where they spoke. He's having trouble finding a good contact in the cult and says she needs to get their leader's attention. Vale visits Grund, the urchin she helped in the market, and offers him some food in exchange for information. This is earlier when she first finds out about the fact that the food in the city isn't going to the people who really need it most of the time. Essentially, he's her informant. Grund doesn't have anything to say about a book surrounding their unmade, which she's after, but he does know people deserving and in need of food who are oft overlooked by the grain handouts. She begins handing out food in the hopes that she can get the cult's attention. She gives away everything but a sausage, which she gave to Vatha away. Chapter 73 Kaladin joins the wall guard in Elokor's orders and is placed in Lieutenant Noro's squad. He patrols with them as they hand off a wagon of grain to Valenalat's men for distribution. Kaladin talks to Beard about where they got the grain, but he doesn't know much. Kaladin mentions the lack of gemstone on Azur's blade. Beard imagines it's broken. Kaladin wonders if it's an honor blade, which allows her to soul cast without attracting the screamers, aka Screaming Spren. The Voidbringers launch an attack on the wall. Kaladin and his squad respond. The fight ends quickly. Chapter 74. Vale continues to hand out food to the starving of Kolinar, earning her the nickname Swift Spren, since she steals from the rich and gives to the poor and can't be stopped since she's a Spren. When she is done handing out food and bolstering her reputation, she joins one of the cult's parades and awes its followers with her powers. She informs them that they're following lying, dark Spren, instructs them to act like humans and go home. They do, and she wanders until she finds Wit leading her group in song. Their happiness seems out of place to her. Vale returns to the tailor where she tells the king she needs more time to get onto the Oathgate platform and assures him that he'll save his family in the city. Ishna informs her that she got a note from the cult. They want Vale to join the rebels in two nights as long as she brings food and comes alone. A flashback from Dalinar's perspective, which takes place 11 years ago. Dalinar activates Tanalan's trap. When he catches the caravan and his people dressed in Sadius's colors, Dalinar senses something amiss. They unleash a landslide that buries him and the elites he took with him. Dalinar survives and fights those looking to retrieve his shards. Dalinar kills the enemy and marches back to camp. When he arrives in the command tent, Dalinar discovers that the scouts who spoke of the caravan were sent back to find him and return with news of an ambush and everyone's untimely demise. They're arrested as traitors. Dalinar also discovers that Tanalan turned on his men. The rifters hurl Dalinar's men from the walls. Dalinar plans to take revenge on the city, destroying it utterly. The next chapter is another flashback which takes place 11 years ago. Dalinar sets the rift ablaze, including the haven Tanalan had hidden in years earlier. Dalinar and his men rescue young Tanalan as he tries to save his family who is trapped in the palace. Dalinar makes Tanalan watch his city burn, discovers that the hole he had found Tanalan's family in years ago was a prison everyone knew about, that he had just burned his wife. Dalinar strangles him. Dalinar returns to camp. The scribes think Evie a traitor. Dalinar asserts she was not. He wants everyone who knows the truth to lie, to say she was slain by an assassin so that the destruction of the rift can be called an act of revenge. Ease guilty consciences. Dalinar thinks he can hear screams coming from the rift, including those of his wife. Chapter 77. Kaladin, Adolin, and Shallan wait out a storm in a wine cellar. They catch each other up. Shallan finally got her hands on Hesse's Mystica, a book of Spren. Shallan discovers that the unmade wreaked havoc during the desolations and were not all destroyed. She believes to her in Kolinar, the heart of the revel and the taker of secrets. She plans on infiltrating the cult that night. Shallan enjoys a walk with Adolin, considers becoming the perfect woman for him, before going to the tavern to meet Vatha. They discuss their plan to steal the mausoleum's food to pay the cult for entry over a series of maps. When the innkeeper comes in, Vatha, alarmed, changes his appearance. He seems like he's about to cry when Talon tells him what happened. She wants him to train with Stormlight. Chapter 78. Vale meets a cultist and two guards at the spot designated in their message. She passes their test and is allowed to climb the Oathgate steps to enlightenment. Vatha is to unload the wagon of food and then remain nearby with the unloaded wagon so she can hurl herself toward it if things go south. Vale begins climbing the steps. Kaladin dines with the Xur and some of the other officials in the guard. When a platoon captain makes a trip to the privy, Kaladin takes his seat so that he'll be next to a Xur. Vale meets her guide, Karat, at the top of the steps. He names her Kishi and leads her into the revel. She is told she can't go into the center rings and begins to hear the voice urging her to give in and indulge. Vale uses her powers to give Karat the slip and creates a new persona, Kishi, a seasoned cultist. No one stops her as she approaches the central rings in search of secrets. Kaladin and Azur speak at the officer's table. They each want the other to be open about their past. Kaladin asks why Azur won't let anyone mention she's a woman. She says it's because of the Alethi and their masculine pride. The drums sound. There's another attack on the wall. The inner circles are similar but different from the outer one, filled with people with mad stares and rotting food. 
Kishi keeps hearing voices, finds an overgrown mass on the Oath Gate's control building. It reminds her of a heart. She hears a voice telling her to give in, another telling her the heart is a trap. It's on page 772. Having completed her mission, scouting the area and finding out more about the Oath Gate, she decides to leave. She moves back into the outer ring and leaps off the edge of the Oath Gate platform. Chapter 79. Kaladin kills one of the Voidbringers during a fight on the wall. When he looks around at the dead, he begins to feel like the city is doomed. Kaladin is informed that he is the first to have killed a Voidbringer in Kolinar. Kaladin goes to speak with Azur and reveals that he is a Shardbearer by summoning his blade. He announces that he has orders from Elokar and Dalinar to save the city. Azur asks him to come with her. Chapter 80. Vale visits Grun, senses that something is wrong, and he is lying to her. Vale returns later that day and finds a group of thugs beating him. She scares them off. Grun says he hates her, that the thugs have been taking his food for a while, that they killed his friends. Vale stays with him until he dies before going to see Murray, who also hates Vale and is fleeing with her family before the grips, the gang ruling her area of the city, can come for her. Chapter 81. Kaladin is led into a tunnel carved into one of Kolinar's wind blades. It ends in a room coated in reflective metal plates a stranger, which sounds like wit, gave Azur. He warned her to only soul cast inside a room lined with this metal. It prevents the screamers from sensing them. Unfortunately, it also blocks span reads from contacting the outside. That's on 786. Eri and her sister remain in the room and soul cast all day, sharing a single soul caster. Kaladin tells Azur, Battalion Lord Hadinar, Noro, and his squad about the Oath Gate, that it's the key to saving the city. 82. Shalon wallows in pain, memories of all her failures, but finds her and comforts her as they retell the tale of the girl who looked up the proper way. Shalon still dislikes herself, wants to escape the horrible feelings by adopting one of her personas, but tells her that your other minds take over because they look so much more appealing. You'll never control them until you're confident in returning to the one who birthed them, until you accept being you. That's on 793. Shalon returns to the tailor where Kaladin appears with Azur in an army of wall guards who are prepared to assault the palace. Chapter 83. Elkar leads an attack on the palace while the city is besieged by its enemies. It becomes a race to the Oath Gate. In the palace, Adolin finds a group of guards locked in the palace garrison, labeled traitors for failing to obey their queen. They join the fight. The group breaks up after they've secured the palace proper. Adolin and his group make it onto the Oath Gate platform, where Shalon prepares to fight the Dark Mass, engulfing it, and Elkar leads a second team to the royal chambers to save his family. Chapter 84. Elokar's group makes it to the royal chambers. They can hear the queen singing within. Shalon finds that slashing at the heart with her blade is ineffectual. She touches it as she did the unmade in Urthru. She comes to know it as she did the unmade before it and it struggles to sweep her away. Elokar tries to lead the queen away. She laughs at his explanation of the evil surrounding the palace. Kaladin finds Elokar's heir in a corner, cowering as Spren torment him. Kaladin kills one of them with his sill blade. The queen admits that she continued Gavilar's work, discovered how to bond to Spren, and transformed her queen's guard into radiant. It appears that she is bonded with Yelignar. Kaladin urges the king to save his son. They flee. The queen orders her men to attack. Shalon isn't sure how she scares the heart away. She enters the control room and finds a mirror with Jaw and Nat, an unmade within it. The unmade claims that she's not Shalon's enemy. Kaladin blinds their enemies with Stormlight before retreating to join another battle against the Parshendi, who have made their way into the palace. He comes face to face with Saw. Jaw and Nat, aka Taker of Secrets, asserts she is not the enemy, pleads Shalon not to unlock the Oath Gate, claiming that Ashurt Marn fled on purpose. It is a trap. I was compelled to touch the spread of this device, so it will not function as you wish. That's on page 817. Kaladin loses the will to fight, screams at everyone to stop, but no one listens. Kaladin watches his friends die, Sa, Noro, Beard, and more, one after the other. The king is caught in the middle of the battle with his son, begins to say the words, begins glowing faintly. Moash runs him through with a spear. Elokar dies and his blade appears. Moash kicks it aside. The battle breaks as the queen emerges, transformed by her bond, her chest glowing from a gemstone placed there. Adolin and his team return to the palace and rescue Kaladin and the others, but the heir is not among those saved. Chapter 85. Adolin realizes that Kolinar has fallen and orders everyone to abandon the city, retreat through the Oath Gate. Adolin finds out that the Oath Gate is a trap from Shallan. He orders her to unlock it anyway. John Nat promises to try not to kill her as Shallan opens the Oath Gate. Chapter 86. Dalinar and his men had heard from the ardent Elokar had left the span read with and ordered to contact his uncle. Dalinar's forces are prepared to assist the fight, but no word comes for four hours. In that time, Dalinar feels sorry for himself, hates all the mistakes he has made. Finally, a word comes from the Ardent just before he is discovered. Dalinar knows that his team failed and Kolinar has fallen. Chapter 87 The Oath Gate merely transports those who had been inside the control building, Adolin, Shallan, Kaladin, and Azur, to a place where the sky is all wrong. Azur recognizes it. She hates it. End of part three. Interludes.
Fenley has taken envoy form, which grants her the power to both speak and comprehend all languages. Fenley tells a doctored story about her people to the listeners, tells them to fight for their future in each town she and the Fuse pass through. Ryan feels that the human's bond spread more powerfully than the parchment, even without a gem heart, and must be exterminated. The little spread Venley is hiding seems to allow her to recall the old rhythms. It angers her, but she continues to hide it from Ryan and the others. Mem washes Mraze's clothes before collecting her assistant, Palm, to go drop them off in Mraze's room. Once inside, Palm destroys one of Mraze's paintings of a herald. Mraze orders his guards out of the room and offers Palm, whom he acknowledges as an ancient one, a drink. Palm begins to leave, but stops when Mraze mentions that he knows where Talenalad is. Mraze gives Mem a bonus and urges her out of the room, saying she'll need to find a new assistant. Ryan and the other fused fly Venley to Kolinar. It has already fallen. Ryan informs her that this is the place where her work truly begins. Sheeler, an Alethi officer, is captured by her Dazians and offered three ways to die for his crimes by their general. He chooses to fight the hog. Venley begins making her presentation more frequently to the listeners. During an Everstorm, Odium visits her in a vision. He says, you are not telling the story well enough. You grow restless. The fuse inform me of it. This will change or you will be destroyed. On 846, Venley feels like she can't complete her task, that the wrong sibling perished, and this was her reward. Part 4. Defy. Sing Beginnings. Flashback, eight years ago, Dalinar's perspective. Dalinar is still haunted by what happened at the Rift, can't stop hearing Evie's voice in tears. Gavilar keeps holding Dalinar back and Dalinar is miserable, goes in search of drink. Eventually, Dalinar winds up on the beggar's porch after enduring a fruitless search of the usual hiding places and promising to watch Adolin's bout. Dalinar drinks with a crazy man named Ahu, who sounds like he might be a herald. Afterwards, Dalinar returns to his rooms, the horrors and the voices of the Rift silenced. He hears Gavilar talking to Adolin and Elokar about his loss, how he misses Evie. Elokar is convinced his uncle is a drunk. Galvalar thinks Dalinar needs a change of scenery. The voices return, Evie's weeping. Dalinar stumbles into his room to sleep the memories off. Chapter 89. Kaladin and the others are in Shadesmar. Kaladin can't use his powers without attracting the Spren who feed on the Stormlight. Adolin also can't summon his blade, which Pattern says is dead. Pattern also says Azur's blade is different. The group is surrounded by the souls of the Oathgate, an unmade, and other spren. They realize that they have to escape the platform, but aren't sure how at first. Eventually, Shalon uses her powers to build a bridge to lead them off the platform. Her use of Stormlight doesn't attract the spren. Sil explains that the spren of the Oathgate had been corrupted, which is why they were transported to Shadesmore and not Urthuru. The group makes it onto a small strip of land. Adolin realizes that with Elokar dead and his father planning to abdicate, he is king. I found this confusing since Elokar had planned on making Dalinar a high king before his death, and Dalinar kept seizing more and more power despite his earlier plans. Chapter 90 Zeth is reborn by Nin, the Herald of Justice, but his soul is not properly reattached to his body. Seth is with the Skybreakers, an order that survived through the ages and has been steadily replenishing its members as it waited for the Desolations to return. Seth plans to join them, train alongside them until he can return to Shinovar and bring justice to the ones who had falsely exiled him. That's on page 865. Seth speaks the first ideal, but does not regain the ability to absorb Stormlight. The learns of the five ideals, that one becomes a full Skybreaker by speaking the third ideal, the ideal of dedication, on page 866. He, his new talking sword, and the other hopefuls are lashed and taken to the place where they will be tested. Chapter 91. Kaladin remembers when he was punished by Sergeant Tux for freezing on the practice field, forced to scrape Krem off the bunker floor. Kaladin remembers the man comforting him for being afraid, telling him to be the man his squad mates need. That's on page 871. I feel like this was a precursor, which hints at how Kaladin will mature and develop a need to protect everyone. Something that contributed to this vital portion of his personality. A soft push in a certain direction, which continued as other life events took their effect on him. Kaladin knows the real reason he froze, not the reason he gave to Tux, stating that he did not want to hurt others. Kaladin knew he could harm or kill them, and that's what scared him. Back in the present, Kaladin can't sleep. Syl tries to comfort him and explains that the Spren don't need to eat or drink. She thinks they may feed on human emotion or their thoughts of Spren, however. Syl says in Shadesmar, we can think on our own, but if we go to your realm, we need a human bond. Otherwise, we're practically as mindless as those glory Spren. On pages 872 to 3. She came over because she knew Kaladin would call for her someday. Syl can't go back and tell Dalinar what happened because of their bond and knows something is wrong with Kaladin. He tells her not to worry. He was just caught off guard when he saw Sa and Moash. That was why he froze for the first time since that practice, all those years ago. Their conversation dies as the others awaken. Chapter 92. Zeth and the other hopefuls and squires are brought to the Pure Lake for testing. They are told to find and kill the convicts who escaped from a local prison. Zeth finds and kills one, a filthy, stinky, weak, scrawny man with a makeshift dagger. When he's done, he investigates the prison to find out how the convicts escape, finds a single dead guard in a poorly kept facility. Zeth draws his talking sword and runs the nobleman in charge of the prison through for his crimes. 
Seth's hand turns a grayish-white shade. The stormlight he absorbed wasn't enough to fully heal him. Master Key decides to take Seth on as the squire. Seth speaks the second ideal and is given a glowing emerald. He draws in more stormlight and knows he can become one with the skies again. Chapter 93 Azura explains that she traveled to Roshar via Shadesmar from a faraway land. She was following a criminal and used a portal, aka Cultivation's Perpendicularity, to cross to the physical realm. The portal is in the Horn Eater Peaks. From there, she traveled to Kolinar where things went south and she became trapped. She claims to be neither Radiant nor Herald explains that her blade is flawed, which is why it lacks a spren and can't be dismissed or summoned. She says she traveled by boat the last time she was in Shadesmar and explains that they can restock their supplies in some of the spren cities. There are humans who live in Shadesmar, after all. Shalon doesn't think she can still cast in Shadesmar. Azur hopes they can buy passage to the peaks with Stormlight. The group hears screeching in the distance. Azur explains that they're bad spren and it's time to go. Seven years ago, another flashback from Dalinar's perspective. Dalinar can't stop hearing the dead of the rift and his wife weeping, searches for wine, but can't find enough to silence them. His sons hear him searching and come to check on him, but he scares them off. Renarin returns and offers him a small bottle of alcohol he had purchased with the spheres his uncle had given him. Renarin comforts Dalinar, and Dalinar holds him close as he begs for a god to help him. Chapter 95 Kaladin had drawn anger spren toward them because he felt like the group had abandoned their people to the enemy. Eventually, the spren stops his pursuit and they continue through Shadesmar. As they walk, Syl tells Kaladin of her history. She grew up in a city led by honor spren and bonded a radiant who died in battle. She lost herself after he perished. She had not been ready to bond. Soon after, the recreants happened. Men forsook their oaths, which killed her sibling. She survived because she didn't have a bond then. That's on page 894. After waking Syl from a deep slumber, the Stormfather kept her in the city after that, but she crept away and entered Kaladin's realm so she could find him. She hid among the windspren until she did. The travelers spot a lighthouse in the distance. Chapter 96 The monarchs within Urethero meet for the first time. They discuss how they are technologically superior to the Radiants in the present, how they should capture Shinovar to supply their armies, free trade, and more. There is a lot of fighting. Navani begins to bring the assembly together by signing different groups tasked to know their people excel in. For example, the Azish are to create a code of how their kingdoms are to interact, and how they're to share resources. That's a quote from page 902. Yasna suggests fortifying their current positions and not trying to conquer more land. Navani and Yasna explain that their expedition failed and their homeland was overrun. Kolinar has fallen completely. The Oath Gate was locked on their side. That's on 903. Taravangian fears that the enemy may move on his lands next. The Azish and Alethi offer to send aid. During the meeting's recess, Navani realizes that Dalinar's haunted expression and desire for her to leave the meeting hints at his having remembered something he had once forgotten. She thinks a change of scenery may help him. Chapter 97 Kalinar remembers when he and some slaves ran away. His life was spared because he stayed beside a woman named Nama, who had been caught in a trap as she died, because he didn't run. Kalinar does some reconnaissance of the lighthouse and finds a Shin man inside. The man spots him. Sean draws while they're waiting for Kaladin to return. She and Adolin spot what appears to be a corrupted glory spren. The Shin Man offers to tell Kaladin's fortune. Kaladin says he is looking for passage. As the re-oracle checks his ledgers, Kaladin touches his crystal ball, for lack of a better word or words. Kaladin is carried away by the storm. The corrupted glory spren lands on Shalon's arm and delivers a message from Shana before flying off. It is, Odium suspects that you survived. He thinks something strange happened to the Oathgate because of our influence. We've never managed to enlighten such powerful friend before. It's believable that something odd might happen. I lied and said I think you were sent far, far from the point of transfer. He has minions in this realm, and they will be told to hunt you, so take care. Fortunately, he doesn't know that you're a light weaver. He thinks that you are an else caller for some reason. I will do what I can, but I'm not sure he trusts me any longer. That's on page 912. Kaladin rides a storm and has a vision of Dalinar surrounded by the nine shadows of the unmade. Kaladin knows that their enemy's champion is coming and that Dalinar's life is imperiled, that without help, it will be snuffed out. The fortune teller is amazed that Kaladin saw something, covers the orb, and realizes that it has begun again as Kaladin stumbles out of the room to retrieve his friends. Shalon and Adolin trade the Shin Man for some goods as they wait for a ship to arrive and take them away. Kaladin makes it his mission to protect Dalinar. The group watches as the ship pulls in. Chapter 98 Seth and some of the other squires take part in a challenge designed to test their martial prowess. The trainees are supposed to stay within a marked-off area of the Pure Lake and hurl colored bags of powder at each other. Squire takes the fewest hits and her hits from the fewest different colors wins. Seth looks like he's going to win until everyone begins ganging up on him. He runs out of stormlight and plummets into the lake. His performance seems to have impressed some high spren who had been watching. Seth wins because the water washed off all the powder on his clothes. The other squires aren't happy. Master Warren believes that Seth will bond his spren soon. Seth wants to do it now. Speak of the third ideal. Nin Sun God, aka the Herald of Justice, objects. He claims there are things Seth and the others need to understand. Things Seth needs to know before he speaks the ideal. The Herald of Justice announces that everyone gathered, with the exception of some inexperienced squires, will be leaving on a long journey so that they can learn the two greatest secrets he knows. On page 923. 
Chapter 99. Kaladin and the others travel towards Celebrant on a ship run by Reachers, aka Lightspren. Kaladin helps Captain Iko make water. Kaladin brings them to Shallan. They talk about her art, how she copes with hardship by burying her emotions. Kaladin wishes he could be more like her and finds that being around Shallan feels right. Chapter 100. Dalinar's memories of the rift plague him as he tours Venonar. Taravangian shows him the half shard shields his people are developing and talks about the creation of Fabrioles. Dalinar excuses himself and speaks to some injured soldiers who all describe having felt the thrill during their civil war. The thrill returns to Dalinar and he flees. He runs into Navani and some Ardens. One of them announces that Dalinar has been excommunicated from the Warren Church. Dalinar flees to the Oathgate and uses his power to return to Urthuru, upsetting the Stormfather. He goes to his room and finds a copy of the Way of Kings, but it does not comfort him. Next, he goes to Adolin's quarters and ransacks it until he finds a bottle of wine he drinks to drown the pain. 101. The travelers change into clothes they purchased from the Reachers. Azur tells Adolin about the duty she has left behind, abandoned, including her decision to give up her throne. The ship arrives in Celebrant. Captain Iko gives the travelers some advice, such as not to wander too far beyond the city's boundaries, explains where they'll find certain buildings, and sends them on their way. The group decides to split up. One group is to book passage to either the Perpendicularity or a Thalen city, and the other is to exchange the money at the money changer. Chapter 102. Adolin, Kaladin, and Sil buy some new clothes, a pair of harpoons, and other supplies in Celebrant's market place. Shallan, Pattern, and Azur are having trouble booking passage. Weissbrand and some of the fused are lurking about Shadesmar. Their luck looks like it's turning around until inspections begin and Azur notices that a fused is running them. Kaladin moves toward another stall to inspect a painting he thinks is of the unmade, while Adolin continues negotiations for supplies. Kaladin is drawn away from the art when Adolin approaches with an announcement that they have a problem. Azur and Shallan return to the registrar's office and discover that the Voidsbrand took control of Celebrant months ago. They watch Kyril, who runs the ship's inspections, light Iko's ship on fire. Kaladin rescues Syl from a crowd of Spren who seem to recognize her. She admits there is a reward for her return to lasting integrity, the capital city of the Honor Spren. She says Azur is a bounty hunter. Kaladin fears Syl's news about the reward for her return will make it harder for them to find passage and notice the smoke in the distance. The Fused storms into the Registrar's office. Shallan hides herself and the others with her powers. The Fused demands information about the human criminals Igo's ship harbored before sacking the Registrar and demanding he sees that the fire on the docks are put out. After he leaves, the Spren is overjoyed to find a radiant and agrees to solve for them while they flee. The two groups are joined one another and catch each other up. Syl gains some passage by turning herself into a ship run by Honor Spren. She's tied up as they sail away and the fuse gives up chase. Chapter 103. Dalinar has a vision of Nohaddin, the man who wrote The Way of Kings. They go shopping at the market together. Dalinar begins to see shadows and sense something is wrong with the vision. When Nohaddin is done haggling for grain, Dalinar calls himself a hypocrite and Nohaddin repeats Dalinar's words on the subject. Sometimes, a hypocrite is nothing more than a man who is in the process of changing. Comes on page 967. Dalinar hears loud noises and heads outside the merchant's tent to find large, stone monsters surrounding him. Nohaddin tells him that he has forgotten something vital, something he needs to continue on his journey and asks, what is the most important Important step a man can take as Dalinar awakes. That's on page 986. Dalinar realizes it wasn't a vision because there had been no storm and remembers Gavilar's funeral clearly. Chapter 104. Navani meets with Aladar, Sabariel, Hatham, and Bathab, while Dalinar continues to drink and hide in his rooms. They discuss labor shortages, how they're running low on lumber, and more, and how to combat each of these issues. Bathab thinks that Navani is trying to seize control and this troubles Navani. She heads to the library and speaks to her daughter, who promises to get her a report with information pertaining to Fabrioles. Navani also finds page papers on Renarin's attempts at writing, and the appearance of Spren in Yasna's possession. Troubled, she retrieves a copy of the gemstone translations and goes to find her husband. Six years ago, a flashback from Dalinar's perspective. Dalinar attends Gavilar's funeral. He is soul cast into stone. Elokar calls for vengeance, for an extermination of the Parsendi. Sadius is the first to back him. Dalinar plans to take an advance force to the Shattered Plains to secure the area in preparation for the others coming. Dalinar secretly sends his forces on ahead, swears them to secrecy while he seeks the old magic. 106. Back in the present, Seth and the other skybreakers fly to Marat. Nin and Seth continue on to another small town ravaged by war. Nin shows him a destroyed courthouse, explains that he has failed because the desolations have returned. Nin explains that laws were designed to take a human's choice, so their tendency toward mercy could not come to harm them. Nin says Zeth must speak the third ideal, that he will be the first of a new Skybreaker order. Nin explains that he is both Herald and Skybreaker of the fifth ideal. After showing Zeth both his blades, he says he must tell Zeth of the decision the Heralds came to on Arahedium, the day they sacrificed one of their own to end the cycle of pain and death. That's on 988. Chapter 107. Dalinar attends a meeting of the monarchs where they plan how to defend Yaakoved. Although the plan is sound, Dalinar feels like something is wrong. He realizes, after a time, that the enemy is more likely to attack Thalen City. The group realizes they have to counter any attack by raising a fleet of their own. They begin planning. Dalinar visits Kadash and apologizes for the rift, offers to give all his ardents to Taravangian. Kadash says no, but requests a statement that would allow the ardents to move on. 
After the conversation, Dalinar wonders if the enemy has a leader outside Odium who commands them more regularly. The Stormfather doesn't know. Dalinar appears to want to invite them into a vision during the next high storm. Teravangian meets with Adratagia. They are not happy that Dalinar has recovered. Teravangian is told of Graves' death and the loss of the shards. He doesn't seem too concerned. Melada has nothing new to report. It appears she and her friend, Spark, are siding with Teravangian to get revenge for what the Radiants did to Spark's friends years ago. Teravangian decides he wants to share the secrets they found out about Dalinar and the translations of the Dawn Chant to bring Dalinar down. Chapter 100 Kaladin and Shallan plan how to get off the honor's path. Captain Notum allows Shallan to study some of the beads a spren collected for her in a bucket. Shallan continues practicing with the beads. Kaladin and Shallan find out that Azura made a deal with the honor spren. Information for passage. Azura gets her blade back. It's important to note that it requires no spren and Azura plans on trading this information to the honor spren. Shallan and Kaladin are both surprised and not pleased by her actions. They also discover that she is seeking a criminal and shard blade that bleeds black smoke. Shallan explains that she likes to hide within different personas and asks which version of her Adolin prefers. He says the real hurt and admits to having killed Sadius, to not being sorry. Shallan says they shouldn't tell his father. Kaladin makes a commotion. Captain Notum describes how Honor began to set the Stormfather up to take his place, how Honor stopped giving life to new Honor's friend. The Stormfather created some children, but all save Syl were killed in the recreants. Grieved, the Stormfather did not make more honor spren for ages. And then, only ten. Notum does not feel as though Syl is ready for a bond and considers forcibly breaking it by killing Kaladin. Kaladin convinces Notum to consider letting Syl go and taking them to a portal so he can save the bondsmith, Dalinar. A scout spots a group of fused flying toward the ship. Chapter 109. Dalinar invites a Parshendi woman into his vision of young Nohadan during a storm. Odium knows and is coming. The Stormfather agrees to try and hold Odium back. Venli doesn't think a truce is possible. Odium begins tearing the vision apart. Venli realizes Dalinar is a radiant. She rescues Timber from the debris. That's a little sprint she saved. Dalinar is in pain. It fades as Odium appears before him. Odium explains that there can and will be peace once he has rebuilt the world following Dalinar's destruction of it. The vision fades. Dalinar hears the Stormfather crying and says Odium is too powerful. Chapter 110. Captain Notum frees Syl and allows the travelers to escape before the fused arrive. Azur chooses to stay behind to help the Spren. After hiding from their pursuers, the travelers continue toward the Oathgate at Thalen City. Chapter 111. Dalinar arrives in Thalen City and inspects the fortifications Amaram and his men have completed. Dalinar discovers that the Stormfather is only alive because Odium fears Cultivation's wrath and that he has met Cultivation before. That there is a third Spren like the Stormfather and the Night Watcher, Shadows of Gods. The Stormfather says the Spren is asleep, but won't say anything more. He also says Honor loved humankind and died protecting them. During a meeting of monarchs in Thalen City, the Stormfather tells Dalinar of the coming storm and Dalinar begins to sense that something is wrong. The span reads in the room all begin to bring news. In addition to the Everstorm comes the translation of the Ilya Steel, part of the Dawn Chant written by a witness of the coming of the Voidbringers long before the First Desolation. It explains that the humans are Voidbringers from another world who had been taken in by the Parshmen after they destroyed their homeland. In essence, humans are invaders, and the first desolation was the invasion of humankind onto Roshar. That's on page 1044. Teravangian reveals part of this information to the group. Ben is upset about the news that Dalinar was going to be made High King. Nura shares news of the two visions Dalinar didn't share with the group, the two pertaining to Odium. Yasna asserts that this is an attack on her family's reputation. She and her mother try to defend Dalinar as the coalition begins to crumble around him. Chapter 112. Kaladin recalls calls his memory of kissing Terra as the travelers arrive above the oak gate and notice this bridge is guarded by hundreds if not thousands of enemy spren. Chapter 113. Dalinar speaks to the Stormfather about how the recreance was caused by both the truth of man's origins and the radiance fear that they would destroy the world. The meeting begins to break up and Dalinar is dismayed to discover how many of the monarchs no longer trust him. Even Taravangian has left his side. That's the end of part four. Interludes. Fenley continues giving speeches to the listeners before she is taken to a ship. She is to set sail with the other Parshmen. Ryan explains that he and the other fused are going to give the world to their descendants once it has been won and they will finally rest. Red lightning flashes in the distance. Ryzen, the keeper of Queen Fen's ledgers, is visited by her old friend, Stim. The Stim informs her that he is to be named Minister of Trade and Royal Liaison to the Guild of Shipping Merchants. Wisdom gifts Ryzen a large frigate named Wandersail. Ryzen accepts it reluctantly. During an account of Queen Fen's vault, a disguised parchment tries to steal an expensive ruby known as the King's Drop. After disposing of him, Ryzen wonders why the attempt was made. Taft and the other men of Bridge 4 return to Earth through. Taft's friend warns him that some Something is wrong, and the group discovers that Rock, Bissig, and F had been attacked and grievously wounded while the others were in Thalen City. It looks like the attacker was trying to get the honor blade from F. Bissig says he didn't recognize the attacker who had disguised himself using Tef's old coat. Part 5 New Unity. Five and a half years ago, another flashback from Dalinar's perspective. 
Thalinar hears the voices of the dying of the Rift and his visions of becoming a great conqueror on his way to the Night Watcher. Upon meeting her, he asks for forgiveness. Her mother, Cultivation, interrupts their meeting. Cultivation gives Dalinar both a boon and a curse. She rids his mind of the bad memories, but also takes his memories of Evie, memories she admits will eventually return to him. Dalinar returns to his men and realizes that his memories, save for anything surrounding his wife, are clear. She had been taken completely. Dalinar had been given a sense of peace. He vows to overcome his excessive drinking and prepares for battle. Chapter 115. The Parchment arrive by sea on the Everstorm. Amram's men and the Thalans fight to defend Thalan City. The travelers weigh their options. Kaladin thinks they should try something. There is no other way for him but through Thalan City's gate. Yasna knows Thalan City has fallen, and there is a traitor among them. She summons her shard blade near Renarin. His friend doesn't match up to images she's seen of those associated with the Truth Watchers. Fenley serves as an interpreter on the battlefield, telling the singers to fight for the land that was once theirs, etc. Ghostly Spren, the spirits of the deceased, the fused who have yet to decide on a host, rise from the earth as Odium appears on Thalan City's grounds to supervise his forces. Tuft flees, tormented by thoughts that he led to rock and Bissig's injuries and S death. The loss of the bridge's honor blade. He runs to the edge of Earth through and finds it under attack. Navani talks to Fen about how she thinks they can win the battle when a large stone monster sprouts from the battlefield. Odium summons a red mist out of the water. It seems to bring focus, cause the thrill. The travelers watch the Spren army wink out of existence until only six fees remain. Kaladin begins to plan how to get to the Oath Gate. Adolin wonders where the army of Spren went. The Dark Spren begin bonding with the humans, turn their eyes red. Odium orders them to kill Dalinar and bring the city down. They obey and begin a siege on Thalen City. Chapter 116. Kaladin approaches the Fused and starts a fight. A Thunderclast, or Stone Giant, attacks the Thalen Gemstone Reserve. The Fused are brought with it steals the King's Drop. Dalinar wonders why they took it, before finally noticing that Sadius's army has turned into one with red eyes. Yasna hears Renar and whispering, no, not father, no please, as she continues her approach on page 1098. Kaladin draws four of the Fused away. Shalon creates an illusion to help Adolin distract the other two as she approaches the Oath Gate to try and figure out how to make it work. Once there, she calls to the two sentinels of the gate. The King's Drop is delivered to Odium. Benly is told she may need to speak for him. Kaladin disarms one of the fuse with a combination of his harpoon and powers and begins to lead his enemies away from the Oath Gate. Anagon argues with his advisors. He wants to go back to Thalen City. News arrives that the Alethi have turned on the Thalans. Nura orders their ships to move away from those carrying Alethi. Anagon is sad that he and Lyft were wrong about the Alethi. The gatekeepers refuse to let Shallan through. They were forbidden to allow passage by honor. They tell her to seek the perpendicularity. Zeth and Nin watch the battle take place in Thalen City from the skies. Zeth tries to determine whom he should side with, now that he knows the truth of man's origins. Kaladin discovers that Shallan needs more time and accepts a challenge from one of his pursuers. A stormlight runs out. Navani realizes the turn coats are being led by Amaram. She notices Dalinar stepping through the broken city wall, alone, with a book tucked under his arm to face them. Chapter 117. Dalinar is surprised to find Lyft beside him. He asks her to retrieve the king's drop while he faces Odium and the enemy's army. One of the fuse throws blood at the illusions and determines that Adolin is not one of them. The fuse partner attacks and stabs Adolin with a lance. The dead-eyed spread of Adolin's blade comes to his rescue, allowing him to make a break toward Shallan. The remaining fuse pursues Shallan, who conjures a wall to stop it. It is not killed on impact with the wall, and she is forced to dive into the Sea of Beads with Adolin to escape. Lift in her spren, Windel, pursue the Voidbringer with the King's Drop. Seth has trouble choosing a side and is told he can choose to follow a person instead of a law when he swears the third ideal. Shallan rescues Kaladin from the depths with the help of her powers. The Fuse come after the travelers when they make it back onto the shore. The Radiants are out of Stormlight and options until Syl tells Kaladin to say the words. Dalinar watches Odium's army storm into Thalen City. Dalinar asks for a battle of champions. If Odium wins, Dalinar will set him free. If Dalinar's champion wins, the humans are to live. Odium asks if that's what Dalinar really wants. Dalinar seems hesitant to commit. Lyft is attacked by one of the stone monsters, her legs crushed. The assassin in white, whom she recognizes, comes to her rescue and slays the monster. He joins her on her quest. Navani is captured by some of Sadius's men along with Fen and her consort. Ash finds Talon in a tent. Renarin knows that he is no radiant, that Gliss had been corrupted before their bond was made, that Yas Asna was coming for him. He can see it in the glass, alongside a vision of his father kneeling before Odium. Odium and Dalinar agree to the test of champions. Dalinar is surprised Amaram is not his enemy's champion. Odium warns Dalinar that what is coming will hurt. Chapter 118. Odium makes Dalinar remember, lets him know that he was always with him, driving him to kill through each of his years. When Dalinar won't give Odium his pain to hold, he plunges Dalinar into a memory of the day he killed Evie. Seth lays waste to the enemy with his sword before chasing after the Voidbringer with the ruby. Ivory explains that Renarin has Odium's power to see the future. Talon begins to repeat the same words over and over. 
Kaladin struggles to say the words as Windsprint appear around him. Lyft discovers that Zeth can't drop a sword because he has lost its sheath in battle. It is feasting on his stormlight. Lyft decides to take Zeth to Dalinar to see if he can help. Navani uses her pain reel to fight her captors and free herself, Fen and her consort. They head back onto the wall in search of friendly faces. Navani finds Dalinar facing Odium. Dalinar is forced to relive the rift and refuses to let Odium take his pain. He clutches his copy of The Way of Kings. Odium burns it with lightning. Teft hides as others die. Kaladin thinks of his dead friends and brother. Odium continues to torture Dalinar, to ask for his pain after separating him from the Stormfather. Dalinar can't stand the truth, the pain of who he really is. Lyft breathes life into Zeth, and black veins begin to crawl over her skin as well. Renarin knows Dalinar is Odium's champion, and has already fallen. Odium announces that Dalinar is a new leader within his army's ranks. Amaram is given a gemstone, the same one that was given to Elokar's wife, the means to gain the power he was promised. Amaram had been speaking with Odium too, but not for as long as Dalinar. Amram wants to kill Dalinar, but Odium won't let him. Odium orders Dalinar to rise and claim his new rank. Kaladin doesn't want to fail Dalinar, but doesn't feel strong enough to say the words. Yasna can't kill Renarin. He is surprised. It means his visions can be wrong. Although he is in pain, Dalinar refuses to give it over to Odium. Chapter 119 more glory Sprand joined the one Dalinar held. He won't give Odium his pain and accepts the mistakes he has made. The Stormfather rejoins him. Renarin and Yasna race through Thalen City toward a gathering light. Thousands of glory Sprand flock to Dalinar. Odium begins to look small. The lights signifying Thalen City and the people within it in Shadesmar begin to shift, still think someone is about to save Kaladin. Dalinar announces that he is unity and combines the three realms. Honor's perpendicularity opens in Shadesmar. Ash apologizes because it has been 4,000 years. Talon is pleased. This gives them a chance. Talon leads Ash towards someone he doesn't know who is waiting for them. Tess speaks the words. Yasna uses her powers to dispatch several soldiers. Renarin is overcome with a sense of strength and mesmerized by the sight of a large column of light. Light begins to stretch ahead. Dalinar fills empty gemstones that litter the battlefield with stormlight. Knowing that he has been forgiven by his wife, Dalinar begins to heal. Outraged, Odium orders Dalinar's death. Amaran moves to fight Dalinar, but Dalinar deflects his attack with a pillar of light he created and brings Kaladin, Shallan, and Adolin back from Chazemar. Dalinar's light saves Seth and Lyft from the sword's power, although sections of their skin has grayed. Seth leads Lyft toward Dalinar. Dalinar accepts that Elokar has died as the pillar fades. Renarin heals Adolin. Dalinar's radiants gather around him, including two divinities. Dalinar gives orders for the seven radiants to hold Thalen City as Renarin gets reinforcements from Ur through. Kaladin is to be Dalinar's bodyguard as he tries to rid the enemy of their big stick. That's a quote from page 1143. Chapter 120. Kaladin prepares to fight Amaram, who groans. Kaladin wonders if Amaram just swallowed something. Shallan conjures an army of illusions, and Adolin decides to help the defenders inside Thalen City. Seth's sword starts humming. Amram is enveloped by the same black smoke that surrounded Queen Asudan and lunges for Kaladin. Dalinar sees his past reflected in the mist and greets the thrill as an old friend before walking into it. Shallan continues to expand her illusory army with Radiant and Vale's aid. Adolin rescues Kdralk, Queen Fen's son, from enemy soldiers. They decide to rescue Kdralk's parents next. Yasna soul casts her enemies into smoke. Zeth retrieves the king's drop from the fused who had stolen it, drawing the attention of three more fused. Adolin and his team rescue his aunt and Thalena's rulers. Adolin lets Navani know about the fall of Elokar and Kolinar comforts her as she grieves. Yasna fixes the hole in Thalen City's wall with her powers and uncovers a corpse with a shard blade. Adolin gives orders and runs off to help fight a stone monster. Kaladin fights Amaram as crystals form on Amaram's body and crack his shard plate. Dalinar sees more of his memories in the mist, sees what drives it, the desire to fight. Yasna instructs Navani and the royals to cleanse the city so that they will only have to fight on one front when the awaiting parchment assaulted again. Yasna decides to help Shallan next. Zeth is cornered while carrying the Dun gemstone and throws it away to escape the pursuing fused. He regroups with Lyft, who has a plan to get it back. Shallan loses herself in the illusion she has created, is brought back by a girl asking for assistance. Their amethyst crystals begin to shatter the plate on Amaram's arms and feet. A brawny fuse joins their fight. Adolin cuts off one of the Thunderclass legs at the ankle before getting pulled into a building by a stranger in shard plate. Dalinar accepts the thrill and who it helped him to be. He becomes to understand it. Fenley starts to say the words, is stopped by Fuse to searches for Timber but cannot find the Spren. Timber explains that she captured Venli's void Spren. Venli locks herself inside a ship's cabin and draws in Stormlight. Her Dom, a shard bearer of Thalena, and Adolin hatch a plan to take down the Thunderclast. It doesn't work and Adolin is injured. He is healed by Renarin, who takes over the fight. Adolin lends her Dom his blade, Maya, so that her Dom can support Renarin. Adolin decides to help hold the streets. Zeth seizes the gemstone from the enemy and swaps it with the fake Lift hat. The fuse don't notice. Zeth's fear of the mist forces Lift to take the gemstone to Dalinar, alone. Amram's armor continues to crack and break around him as the crystals grow. Kaladin realizes Amram can use lashings and that his ribs and organs have been replaced by a large violet crystal. The fuse come to Amram's aid after Kaladin cracks Amram's crystal heart and its light goes out. Renarin and the Thalen Shardbearer defeat the Thunderclast. Renarin rushes to open the Oathgate and struggles with the knowledge that he should be dead. Yasna leads Chalon onto the wall. 
Dashav informs Renarin of the attack on Urthuru. He decides that he will take down the 12 he's guarding the Oath Gate. As he approaches, a group of Alethi troops led by Tept emerge from the Oath Gate. Shalon watches the Parshman gather their ladders for a full assault on Thalen City. The Alethi seize the Oath Gate. Renarin plans on bringing more troops through and assigns the other bridgemen tasks. Lyft gives a ruby to Dalinar. Kaladin runs out of Stormlight as the Red Mist disappears. It frightens the Fused away. Amaram rounds on Kaladin. Rock kills Amaram and his shard blades appear beside him. The enemy charges the walls. The red light fades from the eyes of Amaram's soldiers. The attack breaks. Several of Amaram's soldiers go with the enemy while the others collapse or deal with sickness. The storm vanishes to the east. Kaladin notices Dalinar clutching the gemstone that captured the thrill crying. Dalinar announces that it's over on page 1189. Chapter 121. Moash and some slaves break and remove rubble from Kolinar's palace. Moash is called to a meeting with Hanan. He is asked if he would be willing to kill a god now that he has killed a king. It is Odium's will. Dalinar is reunited with Navani. He thinks he knows why his memories return. Dalinar entrusts Navani with the king drop's care and asks her to study it, find out why it could capture the unmaid. Navani says she has seen something like it before. It was something her late husband had crafted. Dalinar also asks Navani to teach him how to read. Shalon promises Yasna she'll do better and finish her wardship. Dalinar, Fen, and Navani plan to write the Azish to explain what happened. Shalon is reunited with Adolin. She seems to finally choose him over Kaladin. Fenley flees with some of her kind aboard a ship. She realizes her bond with Timber is supposed to be impossible, but she's happy about it. Seth tells Nin that he swears to follow Dalinar and says the words. Seth wants to cleanse the shin of their false leaders as the quest for his next ideal, as on page 1100. 98. Nin leaves Zeth after telling him to protect Dalinar. He says he will return to teach Zeth more of the surge of division. Adolin announces that he's going to take a step back so that Shalon can be with Kaladin. He has seen the looks they share. Shalon expresses her lack of interest in how she has chosen Adolin. They kiss. Kaladin watches Adolin and Shalon kiss and realizes she had chosen him. He agrees with her decision and realizes that he never really loved her. She just reminded him of someone. Kaladin speaks with Syl and she confirms that humans are the void bringers and Odium is the void. He draws an emotion and doesn't let go. Humans brought him with them. He was man's first god before they turned to honor. That's on page 1202. Kaladin wonders which side he will fight on now and promises Syl that he and his men won't abandon the Spren. He speaks to Tept and promises to be there for him too. Teravangian tells Dalinar that he assumed Dalinar would fail and he could rise to take his place at the head of the coalition. Dalinar realizes that Teravangian was made ruler of Yahakaved on purpose and learns that the king knew of the coming desolation from a woman named Dova, whom Teravangian assumes is a herald. Teravangian explains that he didn't order Gavlar's death but found the assassin who murdered him and gave him orders. Moash kills the king of the heralds. Lopin is a radiant. He speaks about it with a wounded man. Lopin is made second in command after Tept as Kaladin goes off to run an errand. Ash decides to take Talon to Azir. On the way, she senses the death of her father, the king of the heralds. Yasna approaches them. She has an accurate picture of Ash and Talon. Ash wonders why Midias gave it away before collapsing. Chapter 122. Kaladin flies to a location marked on a map. He finds Scar and Drahi in a cave with Shalon's servants, a few strangers, and Elokar's son. Drahi vows to protect them. Raul begins to doubt the diagram. He argues with Adratagia about their standing in the coalition, whether Teravangian shared too much. Teravangian thinks about his deal with the Night Watcher, his gift and curse, the power to save his people, a mixture of compassion and wisdom that come and go and never stand together. Teravangian is visited by Odium. Teravangian got his attention after allowing Odium's army into Urthuru. The pair make a deal. In exchange for sparing Carbranth and its people, Teravangian will serve Odium. Odium asks for the honor blade Teravangian stole and for him to discover the depth of the Alethi's knowledge of Urthuru. During a meeting of his generals and scribes, Dalinar reveals to Shalon and Adolin that he knows there's a traitor among them, since Urthuru's oath gate was open to the enemy. Dalinar doesn't seem to suspect Teravangian. Dalinar wants Adolin to be king while he leads the coalition in Radiance. Adolin says he killed Sadius and won't be king. He is not meant for the job. Shalon has an idea. Yasna bursts into a conference room awaiting kings and queens with a crown on her head. Leshwi presents Moash with the sword of the assassin in white, Jezereza's honor blade. Moash is renamed Vire upon taking it and invited into the skies. He has work to do. Vire lashes himself upward. Shalon prepares for her wedding and is reunited with her brothers. Bolat hands her a note from Rays. It explains that her brother's presence is a wedding gift. The note congratulates her her and states that she has repaid a portion of the cost of the soulcaster she destroyed, that she is another mission, to turn it on maid, make it one of the ghost bloods. If she can't, she is to contain it and hand it over. Shalon burns the note. After Adolin and Shalon's wedding, Dalinar practices his letters. Navani helps him write about his life, a book he has named Oathbringer, My Glory and My Shame. One of the blades Rock won by killing Amaram was returned to Dalinar. Oathbringer hangs on his wall. Now for the epilogue. Wit gives his last performance and rescues a frightened cryptic from Kolinar's palace wall. He plans to leave the city. That's the end of book three. So there you have it. That's my summary of the third installment of the Stormlight Archives, Oathbringer by Brandon Sanderson. I hope you guys found it helpful and that you liked it. If you did like it, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. I absolutely love those 
shows. And if you want to let me know how I did down below in the comments or about your favorite part of this novel, I'd like to hear both things down below in the comments. Always remember to subscribe and hit that bell so you know what's up and I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye guys. Thank you.